Hello everyone. Um, welcome to the Redesigning School Counseling uh, webinar for Renewal Schools. Uh, this webinar's focus is on resources um, and priority goals. Um, and because your Renewal School will be updating uh, information about your resources, sharing that with your advisory council, and then if, if needed, changing or updating your priority goals. Um, my name is Sue Reynolds. I'm the Executive Director of the American Student Achievement Institute. Okay, so basically today's agenda is um, we'll always, like we always do, we'll start out with a review. We'll look at the RSC beliefs once again. We'll, we'll review very quickly the RSC process and put that in perspective of today's activity. Then we're going to walk through the meeting. Um, and this meeting's focus again is on resources and priority goals. And then we'll talk about submissions and uh, the rubric for those submissions. And of course, we'll look at the online system. So let's start out with our quick review. Um, again, our beliefs are that school counseling programs help students make sound choices in areas that impact academic success. Um, this is uh, the school counseling pyramid. And again, this is just a different way of expressing um, what the previous slide said. But we, we believe that when, school, when schools provide sound guidance and counseling programs, or students are participating in, in guidance and counseling programs, that they tend to make better choices in areas that impact academic achievement. And as a result of that, then achievement goes up. So when we're designing our program, um, and this you did kind of last month, we started out with uh, looking at your school improvement plan and the achievement goals that were in your school improvement plan. And then we looked at all of the choices um, that kids need to make in order for you to reach the goals in your school improvement plan, but also in order for students to um, enter post-secondary education um, and succeed in post-secondary education. So all of the choices that kids need to make. And then finally, um, down the road, we're going to design a guidance and counseling program that will help kids make those choices. So really, the student choices are your goals, and that's what you worked on last month. And then today, we're going to narrow down, come up with a subset of all of your goals that will become your priority goals. So in terms of the design process, um, in the very beginning, we worked on getting ready. Um, you updated your steering team, you collected data, you updated your self-studies, and you updated your advisory council. Um, then we met with your advisory council, we talk, updated your, your vision statement, and then last month we met with the advisory council again, we updated all the student choice goals. And then this month, we're going to work on expanding resources, and then based on the, how many resources um, we obtain, especially time, then we'll start to tackle priority goals. Um, there's a lot of programs that tackle just one or two, three priority goals. That's fine. Um, and there's some that you know can can tackle more than that because they have a lot of time and a lot of different resources. This is actually my favorite discussion in all of our process. Um, because it's the, in my opinion, it's the discussion where the community's kind of light bulb goes off that we can't expect counselors to address all of these issues that kids are having unless they have resources, especially time. And then we get very creative with the advisory council and talking about, okay, how are we going to get more time and energy and resources, funding, materials, whatever, for our school counselors so that we can tackle more of those program goals. Then next month, after we've set the priority goals, the, the smaller number of priority goals, then we're going to look at root causes. And the root causes will be the reasons for why kids aren't making the choices that we want them to make. It might be um, that they don't have good information and that would, or they don't know how to use that information. That would be a guidance issue. It might be that they have personal or social problems that are interfering with learning. That would be a counseling issue. Or maybe they have information, they do not have any personal or social issues, but we're just not giving them the opportunity uh, to make the choice that, that they need to be making. 
Um, for example, kids cannot roll, enroll in um, AP courses if we don't offer AP courses. So we're looking at those three areas, knowledge, social, personal issues, and opportunities, as um, being the limiters or the things that are getting in the way of kids making the choices that we want them to make. Once we know what the limiters are or the, the root causes, um, then uh, in the next month, in December, we'll meet again with your advisor council and then start talking about, okay, what are we going to do about it? If kids aren't enrolling in AP classes and it's because we're not providing the opportunity, then what are we going to do about it? And then that would become an advocacy, probably, activity. If kids, if we do offer AP classes, but kids just don't know what AP is, then we've got a guidance issue. So we'd build that into our guidance program. Um, so in, in, in December, we're working in the activities to address those root causes. And then second semester, we'll work on the prep for those activities. So we'll write guidance lessons or update your guidance lessons, program calendar, individual calendars, and then um, the annual budget. OK, so I'm going to go back and see if we have any additional questions coming in. And I'm not seeing. Any other questions? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, um, so this month we're talking about prepping for your next advisory council meeting where we're talking about resources and priority goals. So just a little discussion uh, to begin with. Um, Last month we looked at your program goals, and as, we, as we've said, the program goals are all of the choices that we want your students to make. Um, some of them are going to be addressed by your school counseling program in a big way, and some, because of time and resource limitations, won't be addressed in a big way. But your program goals are really all of the choices that you want kids to make. Then a subset of those goals become your priority goals. So this may be, for most schools, it's one, two, maybe three goals that you're really going to hit hard um, next year. You're going to implement extra activities to address those goals. And then you're also going to monitor data for those goals so you can see if your activities are having an impact, if kids are making better choices. Um, one of the schools that I looked at this morning was um, Eastern uh, High School in, um, in Pekin, Indiana. And uh, I'll share their data with you in a little bit later. They, they um, uh, have really done a nice job at helping students make better choices, and the data backs that up. Um, okay, so priority goals, um, you know, we do have some schools that have 14, 15 priority goals, but if you have 14 or 15 priority goals, please remember that that means that you're going to do extra activities next year to change the student data in those goals to see more students making those priority choices. Okay, um, so the other thing that we think is very important for everybody to realize, your administrators, your advisory council, is that the number of program goals, of priority program goals that a school can, that a school has the capacity to tackle. Let me back up. The number of program goals that a school has the capacity to, to tackle as priority goals is limited by the available resources. If counselors don't have time, they're not going to be able to address any of those program goals. So the more time, the more energy, the more resources, materials that counselors have, the better job they can do at tackling more of those program goals in making them priority goals. That's, that's key to, to this month's discussion. So when we're talking about school counseling resources and expanding the resources, the biggest one is, is of course, time. Um, if counselors don't have time because they're doing all kinds of other things, they have nothing to do with school counseling, um, they're not going to be able to have priority goals. They're not going to be able to provide a guidance curriculum or, or counseling activities. Um, and then the other issue that impacts time as well is, is the counselor ratio. So we're going to talk about those two issues big time with your advisory council today, or at this meeting. And, um, and really, um, because your advisory council sees all those choices that they want kids to make, also has data about how kids aren't making those choices, 
the advisory council tends to become a huge advocate for the school counselors. Um, every year we hear about school counseling programs that have added counselors, even this year, um, when, when uh, funding for education is so uh, uh, tight. We've had um, a school tell us that they added a counselor after going through this um, process, and it was the advisory council that became an advocate that said, you know, we want kids to make these choices, and the counselors cannot do this. We need more counselors. Um, so we'll look at that ratio. It, also in the ratio, we'll talk about how counselors uh, are being used, and do we really have full-time counselors, or do we have half-time counselors, or pseudo-counselors, or counselors on paper, but not counselors in reality. So time and ratio are a thing that we're going to really look at heavily this, this month. Um, then we'll also look at, are there additional programs in the school that help support uh, the school counseling program, uh, like a teacher advisor program or a peer mentoring program? Um, are there programs in the community um, that help to deliver the school counseling program that help kids make better choices? Um, is there space provided for counseling, technology, materials, supplies? Does the counselor have professional development opportunities? Um, and number 10 is really important. What is the perception of the school counselors? Um, when, we sur when you surveyed students last uh, spring, th some of the survey questions was about kids' perceptions of their counselor. And so we'll pull that into the discussion too. Um, because you know we if you may be the most wonderful counselor, but if the kids don't perceive that you're a wonderful counselor, um, then they're not going to you know come in for help or come in to talk to you or perceive that what you're saying you know is 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 worth listening to. So we think that the student's perception of their counselor is a is a good resource. It's a it's a you know that reputation that you have is a good resource. And again, um, you know, we, we talk with lots of school counselors that I have a high, high, high respect for across the state who are, you know, some of the leading counselors in the state, but some of them have perception issues. Um, you know, a lot of times that's because uh, counselors have talked a lot about how busy they are, that kids just don't feel that the counselors are uh, approachable. And so they hesitate to come in, or they say, you know, that their counselors aren't available, or the counselors don't like them, or, or whatever. So if you are one of those counselors who is a wonderful counselor, but on your perception that, that the kids have of you, it doesn't come out so high, um, I'd really be thinking about what messages, or maybe what hidden messages, are you giving to kids about uh, your skills, about the time you have available for them, about how much you care about them. Um, so those are just things to think about. Um, and then finally, the last one um, is the funding that you have to run your programs. Uh, that's another resource, um, excluding personnel. So what funding do you have for uh, materials and software and, um, you know, and, and that type of thing. So, okay, so those are all the, the resources that we'll look at and we'll talk with your council about, you know, which of these resources are most important and how do we get more of it? You know, how do we get more time? How do we, you know, make our ratios better? Um, how do we get professional development? How do we get more funds? So that will be a discussion this month with your, with your council. So basically there are two activities um, in this month. The first one is to uh, come up with a resource expansion plan. And, um, and then once you know how many resources you're going to have next year, including time, uh, then uh, to select a small number of program goals that will become your priority goals. Um, so you'll have all these other goals, but the reality is that you won't be able to address them because of your lack of time um, or funding or whatever it is. So we want to keep all those other goals because there are a large number of choices that kids need to make, and we can't just, you know, ignore that. But then we want to say, okay, reality, we have all these goals, but we can only focus on, you know, two or three of them or ten of them or whatever you decide based on how much time you have. Okay. I'm going to pause there real quickly. Let me look, see if I have any questions. And I am not seeing any questions coming in. Okay, so now let's look at prepping for the meeting. 
Okay, there's a couple of things that we need to do. There are some calculations that you're going to need to make prior to the meeting so that when you're talking to your advisory council members, um, you're able to, to give them the information that they need um, in order to um, uh, make some of the decisions that they're making. So um, there's a document in the man your manual. It's document T for tools, T 3.3. And let me come out of this and show it to you, and we can kind of talk through it. So here it is. Oops, there it is. Um, so this is uh, a document to help you make the calculations that you need uh, this month. And um, let me scroll down here. So the first calculation is you're making that you're making is just exactly how many school counselors do we have? So let's say that you're in a building that has on paper two full-time counselors and one half-time counselor. So in this um, uh, calculation chart, you would write the counselor's name um, here, and you'd write their full FTE, um, uh, full-time equivalency. So Counselor Smith is a full-time one full-time counselor. Counselor Jones is also one-time a full-time counselor, and counselor green is a half-time counselor. So on paper, my, um, my uh, FTE is two and a half counselors. But for the past um, year, almost, you've been calculating the percentage of time that your counselors perform in different types of tasks. So what we want to do in column C is to write down the percentage of time that this counselor spends doing school counseling tasks, counseling, guidance, advocacy, and management, those four tasks, um, and not non-program tasks. So let's say that Counselor Smith has done all those time task logs and she discovers or he discovers that he's spending a quarter of his time doing tasks that have nothing to do with school counseling. So the percentage of time then is 75%. Counselor Jones, let's say, is um, also, let's make the math come out easy, 75%. And Counselor Green um, is, not, is only spending, let's say, half of, um, of that counselor's time doing counseling tasks. So my adjusted FTE then is a, I'm, I'm not a full-time counselor because I'm only spending um, half, I'm sorry, three-fourths of my time on school counseling. So I am a 0.75 counselor. And this counselor is also just 75% of their time in school counseling activities. So 75% of one full-time equivalency is 0.75. And then for Counselor Green, I'm multiplying 50% of her half-time position. So that would mean that she's a, a quarter of, of, of a full-time equivalency is spent um, on school counseling tasks. So that would be a 0.25. Um, so, um, and again, I, I just want to review that. I, in this case, it's not 50% because I'm not taking 50% of a full-time equivalency. I'm taking 50% of a half-time equivalency, and that makes this into 0.25. So when I add these up, what I get is, on paper, I would have two and a half counselors, but in reality, I have 1.75 counselors when I add up the adjusted uh, FTEs. And I think when, we, when you're talking with your advisory council, we need to make them realize that, that, that you know, while your ratios might appear great when you're calculating them with two and a half counselors, in reality, you only have 1.75 counselors. The other, you know, the other portion of the time is spent on things that have nothing to do with guidance and counseling. So then when we're calculating the ratios, we would put in your total number of students here. And then to calculate the ratio, we're going to take um, your total number of students and divide it by your adjusted FTE to give you uh, your ratio.
So, and that would be then, you know, whatever it is, um, so many students to, to one counselor. Make sure you're using the adjusted FTE because that's going to make your, your ratio come out higher um, because you, you know, if your counselors are doing tasks that are, have nothing to do with school counseling, you know, you, they, they are working um, for, per time with, with more students. Okay, so that is the, um, the ratio calculation and the, and the FTE calculation. Um, I want to go down to now time use calculation. So your counselors have been keeping their time task logs um, all year. So um, in this section, what we're going to do, let me see if you remind myself, Smith, Jones, and Green. Um, Counselor Smith uh, maybe spent 40% of his time on on guidance, 20%, uh, 10 uh, on advocacy, um, 10 on management, and what does that add up? 60, 70, 80, 20% on non-program. So we're just writing from your time task logs, we're writing down the percentage of, I'm sorry, let me back up, it's not percentage of time. We're writing down, I, I, I misled you, let me back up. We're not adding the percentage of time. We're actually writing the total time spent in terms of hours or log boxes. So most school counselors in um, a, a typical school counseling year will spend about 1,400 hours um, in the year uh, counseling. So it may be um, that they've spent 800 on guide, 800 hours on guidance, uh, 200 hours on counseling, 100 hours on advocacy. 100 hours on management and 400 hours on non-program. So we want to include the hours here, um, or if you don't want to calculate the hours, the other thing that you could do is the 20 minute time boxes. So it wouldn't be um, 800 hours, it would be uh, 2400 boxes. Um, so, so we want total hours here, not percentages. Then at the bottom of this, you would just add in for all of your uh, counselors, you would just add in, add up how many total hours or how many total boxes they had spent um, in each type of activity, and then calculate your percentages, which you would do by taking your total time spent in that category divided by the total time altogether, all five categories added together. Okay, um, so that is the time use percentages and how to calculate that for your department. Um, and then on the budget, what you're writing down is just your annual budget. Um, if you don't have a budget, I would take how much money you've had for your program over the past three years and just average that uh, to come up with what a, a typical amount of money you would have uh, in a year. Um, and then um, you're writing down the total number of students. Um, and then calculating the per pupil expenditure um, uh, for your sc for school counseling. Uh, for a lot of schools, then this ends up being like 50 cents per student. I think in my school when I was counseling, it was 56 percent. Um, but in in for some schools, it's zero. Um, and this is also then something that you talk about with your advisory council. And we find that a lot of community organizations will step to the plate here. They'll say, you know, if, if we could donate $200 from our Extension Homemakers Club, what could you do with that? Um, so, so this is, again, a, a great discussion to have with your advisory council. Okay, so that, those are the calculations, and um, let me see if there's other questions. So I'm going to just pause a minute here because my guess is you I want to make sure that these calculations are clear, so any comments coming? Okay, I'm not seeing anything. Okay, let's move on. Um, and again, for each of these calculations, there's instructions here on the left, so hopefully um, we'll be okay with those. Okay, um, so let's go back to the prep. Um, so those are the calculations, and then the next step is to look at the meeting walkthrough. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to go to a different PowerPoint. Here is the meeting walkthrough, and um, start here on the first slide. 
Okay, so you're welcoming everybody to your meeting, going over the agenda, um, and you're explaining that you're going to develop a resource expansion plan and then identify priority goals. So the first part is to review, and we've just been through that, so... Okay, and then the process products um, with your advisor council, you're explaining them, you know, so far we have our vision statement and we have our program goals. I would suggest that you print from the online system just a list of your program goals and, um, and give it to the advisory council so they see their, you know, the, the fruit of their work. Um, and then today, uh, from today's meetings, there's going to be two products that come from out of today's meeting. Um, one is the expansion plan, a resource expansion plan, and then um, your priority goals. Okay, um, so then you're asking, does anybody have any questions? And then you're saying, okay, let's get into this month's, month's tasks. So, you know, we're also explaining to folks, you know, last month we came up with all these choices that we want kids to make, but the reality is that we're probably not going to have enough time uh, to work on everything. So we want to know what is the most important, where are the most important areas for us to work on. Those are our priority goals. So, and then you're letting your advisory council know that, you know, whatever these priority goals are next year, we're going to implement extra activities uh, to address uh, the goals. And then we're also going to monitor data for those priority goals so that we can evaluate the impact of those activities. Okay, so this is the first time we're really saying, and I, I think we really have to drive this home, is that the number of program goals that we have the capacity to tackle as priority goals is limited by the available, available resources, especially time. You know, we can't have, you know, 600 priority goals when our time is limited, so we're going to narrow down our priority goals. Okay, two activities, uh, resource expansion plan, and then coming up with the priority goals. And we're going to start with the resource expansion plan. So this is just a quick uh, kind of overview. These are all the resources that we need in order to uh, deliver a sound school counseling program. The biggest one is time. Also making sure that we have enough staff to uh, uh, provide that time to kids and parents. Um, and then just kind of running through very, very quickly the, the other types of resources. Um, so then we're saying, okay, let's look at, first of all, our school counseling staff. Um, and on this slide, you would have written the names of your counselors, what their FTE is on paper, the percentage of time that each one of them spends performing school counseling tasks, and um, the adjusted FTE. So when you present this slide, somebody's probably going to say, oh, if, if, if Counselor Smith is only spending 75% of her time on school counseling tasks, what's she doing the other 25% of the time? So what uh, we suggest you do is in the online system, there's a report where you can print uh, all of the non-program tasks, and I would just have that there ready so that if, if you get that question, you can say, well, you know, so interesting you asked, you know, here's a report that shows you all the things that we have, that we do that have nothing to do with, with guidance and counseling. Um, that may make your principal feel um, a little threatened because, you know, the principal is thinking, oh my gosh, if I don't assign those tasks to the counselor, who's going to do that? Is that going to be more work for me? Um, you know, I don't have anybody else to do those tasks. So I usually suggest to schools that a good way to kind of head off that resistance and to make the principal feel more comfortable is, um, is just to say, you know, these, these non-program tasks, they're good tasks. Somebody has to do them. Somebody has to print report cards. Somebody has to calculate GPAs. Somebody has to put on graduation. Um, you know, and if, if it makes the most sense for counselors to do it, then, you know, then we'll do it. Um, but we just want, you know, everyone to realize that when we're doing those tasks, we're not doing school counseling tasks. So again, I'd kind of tread a little lightly here. Um, usually what happens is that the advisory council then later in the discussion will get very creative and they'll start saying, you know, they'll come back and say, okay, let's just talk about who else do we have that could do those tasks. And sometimes in, in my school, for example, the teachers that were on my advisory council, uh, they stepped up and, and started volunteering to do some of those tasks so that I would have more time to, to work with kids. So um, that was very, very interesting. Okay. So here's our ratio, and again, we're using uh, 
the total number of students and the total counselors using the adjusted FTE, and then down at the bottom you've typed in what your student to counselor ratio is. So do you have a support staff? Um, uh, some school counseling programs have a, a, a school secretary and um, a counseling secretary, and we often hear from schools that this, um, that, that, um, that they, the school will hire a secretary to take a lot of the, those non-program tasks uh, away from the counselors. So, you know, that may be a result of the discussions that you have with your advisory council. Um, it's kind of a less expensive way to address the problem than hiring an additional school counselor, but it has the same impact. We have more time for school counselors to, uh, to spend with kids and parents. Okay, so this is... Um, also, when that question comes up um, about, you know, what are you doing if you're not spending your time on school counseling, this is a slide that you can also just fast forward to and, and just show people, you know, here are the main time, uh, main things that are taking our, our, our time away from school counseling. Okay, so then we're going to look at time. And this is my all-time favorite activity. I love this activity. So what we're doing with this is before you tell your advisory council how much time your department is spending on the different types of school counseling tasks before they know what the reality is. We want them to tell you the, their desired time use percentages. You know, what do they desire in terms of how much time you spend on guidance, how much time you spend on counseling, uh, and you might need to quickly define those terms, you know, guidance is when we're teaching kids and, and helping them use uh, what they've learned to make decisions in their life, and it's with all kids. Counseling or social personal issues, advocacy is when we're, you know, advocating with the system on behalf of a student. So uh, you were just kind of asking people to think about how, how do they think you should be spending your time. Um, what I usually do when I'm doing this activity is I'll just ask everybody to get a piece of scrap paper out and write the words on their guidance, counseling, advocacy, management, and non-program, and just put in the time percentages. And I usually will joke about with them that it can't add up to more than 100%. Um, so, so they've written that down on a piece of paper. Then they'll, um, on the walls, we have these five posters up there. So they would then uh, go up to the guidance poster, and if they, you know, in their desired time use breakdown, they are desiring that the counselors spend 50% of their time on, um, on guidance activities, then they would make an X or uh, put a sticky dot above the 50% column on, on, this, this in, on this graph. Um, they can only put one X per graph, and they're just in the, and all their X's have to add up to 100%. So when they do that, what will happen is, let me show you, you'll get a graph. Each of those five graphs will look something like this. And so everybody will put their time percentages on, and pretty much you'll end up with a bell curve. Um, you may end up with, you know, one rogue person who really thinks that guidance is incredibly important um, and, you know, is, really wants to be out here at 80%. But, but pretty much you'll end up with, a, with a, a bell curve. So if I were looking at this, what I'd say is, you know, when we look at this, it seems that the group feels that the percentage of time on guidance should be somewhere between 50% uh, percent and 55%. Um, and we know that we have, um, what are there, eight of you who feel that the percentage should be higher than 55% and uh, seven people that figure feel it should be lower than 50%. So what would you think about if we went right in the middle, and since there's eight on this side, let's make it maybe 53%. And um, so you're right in the middle, a little bit skewed towards the higher end, um, between 50 and 55 percent. So we'll go 53. Um, schools have told us that this is a really easy way to kind of come to consensus with a group that the desired amount of time spent on guidance is, is 53 percent. Um, when you do um, all five of those charts, um, it's, it's always amazing to me that mathematically it just works out, that if this is 55% and the counseling chart says 30% and the advocacy chart says 5%, you know, all of those percentages 
will add up to 100%. Um, and it just works out mathematically because each person has made sure that their percentage is also added up to 100%. You may be a percent off, and if so, then you can, you know, come back and say, okay, you know, well, let's just add a percentage and make this one 54%. How would you feel about that? So it's a pretty easy discussion. Um, and before we talk about reality, then it just shows um, everyone what they think the time breakdown should be. So, okay, so that's an activity that you're doing with your council in the middle of your meeting with them. Then after you know their, their desired time use percentages, then you're coming back and saying, okay, here's the reality. You know, you said 53% on guidance, our reality is 17%. Our counselors are only spending 17% on, on guidance. And if your school where your counselors are being used a lot for non-program, this last number is going to jump out. You know, and I think I've mentioned before in my school, my non-program uh, time percentage the first time we did this with 90%. So you can imagine in everything else we had like 4%, 2%, 1%, and then non-program was 90%. And then our advisory council was like, oh my gosh, that's got to change. Um, so they really became advocates for us in terms of our, our time use. So, and again, you don't have to say anything. You don't, um, you don't have to beg for time. The data will speak for you. Um, and people's desire to help kids combine with this data will make them want to become advocates. Um, so it's really, it's just the coolest activity. I, I love this activity. Okay, um, the next resource is budget. And you've, you know, told people, here's our total budget, here's our total number of students, here's our per, per pupil expenditure, um, here's our network that we have available. Um, counselors meet on a regular basis with each other, with the counselors in the district, with the principal, with teachers, with our uh, parent-teacher association, with department chairs, um, you know, anyone that you're meeting with on a regular basis um, in school, you would, you would add to this network. Um, and then here's our, our community network. We meet on a regular basis with our local economic development council, or our chamber of commerce, or our mental health association, or our local mental health providers. Um, or it might be the, the brand new college success coalition if you're participating in that community initiative. Um, so we're, you know, we're looking at who, who is your network. That's a resource that you have is your network. Um, and then are there additional activities uh, provided by teachers? Um, you're probably not going to have teachers providing counseling activities or management activities, maybe advocacy, but there are a lot of counselors that do provide, or I'm sorry, a lot of teachers that do provide guidance activities. So you might write in here that you have a teacher advisor program or that in your health courses um, you're teaching some social personal skills. Um, so, or your third grade teachers are doing a unit on, you know, careers and you're teaching career development um, from your third grade teachers. So, and then the next slide is the same thing, but now we're looking at community members. Um, and there you would, you know, if there are community members or organizations that are providing counseling, you'd write down, you know, your local mental health counseling uh, organizations. Um, uh, and then guidance, one that we always wrote down is the Boy Scouts because we knew that they do a, they have a merit uh, badge on career development. Um, so, you know, where is guidance and counseling happening in the community? Okay, in terms of professional development, um, here are the um, ways that school counselors uh, stay up to date. Uh, we know that for a large number of counselors in the state, there is no professional development done. So you may have a, a, a um, a slate that is uh, a slide that is very, very uh, sparsely populated. Um, you are per participating in Gold Star School Counseling, so in redesigning school counseling, so that would at least be one thing that you've listed. Um, so again, edit the slide to make it fit your situation. And then additional resources, um, space. Um, here are some um, some kind of rubric items for space that's being provided for you. Uh, technology. Do you have these things? Uh, materials, um, you know, what are there things that you order every year, um, different uh, software updates or books or updates or whatever. Uh, supplies, hopefully you have those. Um, and then perception of the counselors. So that perception of the counselors um, is a report that you can print out from the survey, um, either the Learn More survey or the RSC survey, whichever one um, 
your students did. It's actually the same thing, just a different name. Um, and then um, uh, you'd want to say, you know, this was taken by X students, and I would just pass out the survey results to show, you know, what kids thought about their counselors. Now, if that feels threatening to you, if you would like that to be kind of known to your counselors and then have you, you know, work on it before you start sharing that data with your, um, with your advisory council, you know, that's fine too. I certainly understand that. You have to think about the politics in your building and how much trust there is between you and your, your advisory council. Um, in my school, we left this in. Um, and to be honest with you, the first time I did this in my school, my data was not good. Um, I was the the state uh, school counselor of the year and also the national school counselor of the year. And my students uh, did not perceive um, some things about me that I wanted them to perceive. And in, in my school, what I realized is that I was such an advocate for school counselors that I was always talking about how busy counselors were and, um, and how, you know, we, we didn't have time to do this, we didn't have time to do that. And that in my nonverbal was coming across to the kids and they didn't feel like they could, you know, come in to see me because I was so busy. Um, and I, this is kind of an issue that I think is, is maybe, you know, kind of um, shooting us in the foot that while we, when we talk about how busy we are, it makes people not feel comfortable um, with seeking us out because they, they know how busy we are. So at any rate, um, but we decided to talk about that with our advisory council and um, we, you know, told them why we thought this was happening and what we were going to do to kind of um, address this situation. Um, so, um, but the other op option that you have is just leave the slide out. It may be something that you want to address privately uh, before you start talking about it with your advisory council. So, again, your, your choice on that one. Okay, so um, after we've introduced all of those resources, then we want to look at um, uh, which resources are most important. So this is just an Instagraph. It looks all at all of the resources that you just presented. And um, you're also giving people an opportunity to put some uh, additional uh, resources that maybe we didn't think about in this presentation on, on the um, on the, the, the Instagram. And then you're just asking people, you know, to vote for um, however many, um, vote for the things that they think are the, the biggest things that you need in order to um, uh, have more priority goals. So um, if there's 10 items here, you divide 10 by 3 and you get three, um, and then that would be um, the number of votes that everybody gets. And on this Instagram, they would put their votes um, across the page. So um, if I'm the first one up, I'd put my votes on budget, network, and, and professional development. And then the next person, if they thought that budget was important, they would put their, their X or their sticky dot to the right. So we're building the bars across the page. Okay, um, so then the last step, which is the most important step, in resources is to develop uh, a plan for expanding your resources. So let's say on the Instagram, time um, was the thing that came up as being the most critical, the thing you needed. Um, I'd write time in here then. Um, let me back up. Before you're uh, looking at this poster, you're writing your current time use and your desired time use. You're just reminding people that, you know, what, the, what these numbers are. So I'd write time in here. Then I'm going to ask uh, my advisor council, do you want to change this next year? Is this something as an advisor council we should be talking about changing this? And um, my guess is they'd probably say yes. And then you're going to say, okay, what's the plan? How are we going to get more time? Uh, how can we work more efficiently? Who else can we pull in to do some of the work? You know, we're just saying, you know, let's, let's just brainstorm here. How do we do this? Um, when I did this in my advisory council for the first time, um, I was amazed. One of my teachers stepped up and uh, agreed to um, facilitate graduation, so I didn't have to do that. The athletic director stepped up and agreed to uh, administer ISTEP, so we didn't have to do that. That one blew me away. Our assistant principal stepped up and offered to do some things. Um, so we gained a lot of time, not because in my school we hired new staff, um, but because we got rid of some of the non-program things that, that we were doing. 
Um, and then, but that action plan could also be, you know, hire a school counseling secretary, hire another counselor, um, you know, get software that would make uh, the work less time consuming. Um, so, and then um, on the right-hand column, we want to know what is the targeted resource level. And this is where we need these numbers up here. So if we're getting more time, might maybe the reason that we're doing that is what we want to spend more time on guidance. The, the desired is, you know, 80%, we're spending 50%. So what is our targeted resource level? And you can write in here, you know, just different ways to describe this, but one way could be that our guidance would move from 50% to 60% um, by the end of next year. So it's, it's the where you want to be after you've implemented this action plan. Okay, so that um, is a good portion of the meeting because there's a lot of discussion, brainstorming, thinking in that. Then we're going to come to the priority goals and we're going to say, okay, now that we have identified all of these choices that students must make in order to be successful at school, we did that last month, um, and we, we also know that there are some choices that maybe are important, but no kids are making them. We've got data now on those choices. And given that we have limited resources, especially time, even though we've expanded those resources and I have a plan for that, which student choices should we make as priority goals when we're designing our school counseling program for next year. And we wrote in here one to three because most schools tell us that they're able to just really, you know, they're so busy that they're not able to focus on more than one to three uh, priority goals. So the first thing we're going to do is to review the student choice goals report from meeting two. Um, and I want to show you that report so you can see what that looks like. And I also wanted to show it to you with real data. So this is Eastern High School system. I'm showing you data that's also public on the um, on the uh, Learn More website. Um, so so not showing you anything confidential here. Um, but if I go to the process tab and then scroll down to uh, this month's activity which is update resources and priority goals. And then I'm going to um, review, in this step, review the program goals report. So I'm going to open up this report. And when I click this button, our computer is right now cal calculating a ton of data. I mean, gazillion different data points to put together this report. So this report was going to load a little bit more slowly. I don't know if you can see this, but up here, uh, that circle going around pretty slowly. So it's going to take a few minutes and that long to make that report come up. So don't worry if it takes a little bit. So at Eastern, here are all of their program goals. Um, and then here's the percentage of students who are um, doing each of those goals. So, um, so when your advisory council is looking over this report, now they, you know, they may think, okay, turning in homework on time, that is really important, but 80% of the kids are already doing that. Let's maybe look for things that kids aren't doing. Uh, call the, the Ask uh, Rose homework hotline. Um, there's only, I think that's the one, yep, there's only 3% of the kids in the building that are doing that one. Um, so, um, or um, attend a program to learn how to pay for college. We've only got 7%. Um, and I know of in my, you know, my senior class, we have a lot of kids that are going to college that are free and reduced lunch. So, you know, I need to get more than 31 um, students represented at that, pro that meeting. So it's just kind of, you know, some of these things may be incredibly important, um, but, um, but the kids are already doing them, so they're not going to become priority goals. And some may be not important, um, like from this, data, uh, have you taken or planned to, oops, have you taken or do you plan to take an IB course in high school? Well, if your school doesn't offer IB, you know, that number's going to be really low. I think four kids out of 239 may be colored in the wrong, or, or checked the wrong, the wrong circle. Um, but you can see, you know, how accurate this data is, that, that out of 239 kids, you know, they all knew that there was no such thing as an international baccalaureate course in their school. So just, just really interesting stories. Um, one other thing is that any time the data was less than 10, uh, we don't report data for confidentiality purposes. But on this one, um, 
the students have taken an online learning style assessment. Um, and, you know, fewer than 10 kids said yes to that. So, um, okay. Um, okay. That sounds good. So I wanted to show you that. So back to the, um, back to the PowerPoint. Um, so we're giving people time to review the student choice goals report and then we're asking them to select one to three student choice priorities that they think that your school counseling program should hit hard next year. Um, and again, if, if they, I would give them the option to change that. Um, um, you know, if, if Actually, I would not give them the option to change that because you want them to be focused in this discussion on the things that they think are more important. Um, so I'd say one to three. Later, you can decide after everybody's reported that even though they reported three, you're going to select ten, um, you know, whatever you want to do with that. Okay, so given the degree to which our students are already making or not making sound choices in areas that impact achievement, given the amount of time and funding that's available, how many priority choices should we tackle? Um, and, you know, for most of our schools, it's one, two, or three. Um, I think Eastern had, you know, has more than that. Um, but it's, you know, it's, that's, up, that's up to you. Um, and then finally, which choices should be priority? And that's just a discussion, just kind of, you know, talking out what, what, what is the most important thing uh, for your school counseling to spend that extra time on um, and energy on in the coming year. So then the last thing is establishing student choice priority data targets, what your goals are in those areas. So in your priority goals only, what would the targets be? So here's some uh, elementary examples. For kindergarten students, um, our, our choice, our goal is that they have fewer than 10 absences per year. Our current date is 87. We want to get that up to 95%. So we're really going to work hard as school counselors to have programming and to work with uh, parents and kids to make that happen. We want our third graders to turn in their homework on time. It's 85%. Where do we want that target data to be? Um, and, and actually, when you begin this, these will be blank, so take these out of here. Um, you'll put in the current data, and then with your advisory council, you'll talk about um, uh, uh, what this number should be. I would strongly suggest that you make sure that this data target is realistic, because if you were to say 100% uh, here, there's no way you're going to hit that. And then you'll have to come back to your advisory council a year from now and say, we didn't meet our goal. Um, so it's important that your goal is challenging uh, but doable. So there's elementary examples. Here's a couple of middle school examples. Uh, we want our sixth graders to talk to an adult about post-secondary ed. Current data is 92. We want to get that up to 98. Um, seventh grader take a career interest inventory. It was 20% and we went to 100%. And on the last one it was 0% and we went to 100%. So that shows a huge commitment on the part of the counselors. Um, in my school we did do this. We went from some zeros to 100. Um, if you've never done a four-year high school course plan before with your eighth graders, then it would be zero. And if you are committed to making sure that every single eighth grader has a four-year high school course plan before they leave your building, then it would go to 100. So for some it makes sense to have you know a huge jump in there. Okay, high school examples. There's a four-year course plan again. Enrolling an AP or a dual credit course. Um, submitting a FAFSA. Okay, so again, we want to make those data targets challenging but reachable by the end of the next school year. And remember, lots of people can help you implement activities. This is again in many schools, in my school, where you know our teachers said, "Oh my gosh, you know we can talk about that to the, with the kids also." So some of it were them were teachers on our advisory council. We also talked to our our um, our faculty as a whole and said, "Okay, these are our goals for school counseling. How can you help us with this?" And each teacher kind of thought about how what they could do to help us reach their goal the, the guidance goals um, okay and then um, there's just a, a blank where you can put in your student choice goals um, and then finally a capacity check um, let me go back I think I misled you here on um, these I, I, I said earlier to take out the target 
data targets and, and then put them in, um, I, that was wrong. Go ahead and leave these data targets in as examples, and then when you get to this slide, you'll write in the student group, the choice you want the kids to make, what your current data is, and then define your, your data target. Okay, um, and then finally, the last thing we want to do is a capacity check. This is, again, really important. Um, for you um, so that we're not overextending you. Um, so the question is, given the resources that are available, including time, do we have the capacity for implementing activities that will address each of the priority goals in effective ways so we can reach our targets? And then if not, if the answer is no, if you're starting to feel a little uncomfortable here, because the expectation is going to be that you meet those priority goals. If you're starting to feel uncomfortable, then we need to either obtain additional resources or to say, you know, reality, this isn't going to work. I'm just not going to have enough time to do all this. Let's omit some of those priority goals. Okay, then we're just looking ahead. We're telling people that at meeting four, we're going to talk about root causes. Meeting five, we're going to talk about activities. And then any questions, and then thanking them for coming. Okay, just a few more things. Um, I want to go to the online system. Um, so I'm going to go back to the process page. And um, so on the process page, uh, we're uploading um, the counselor use uh, logs. Um, and remember, the, the requirement is that there's going to be uh, actually, I'm going to move this one because the rec no, this will work. Yeah, we're going to update our, our counselor time use logs. Uh, you started uh, recording the time use logs last spring. Remember, the rubric item is that there are is a log for each counselor, a one week log from each counselor for both the spring semester and the fall semester. So you've got your spring semester from last year, your fall semester from this year. Just a reminder that you can only upload one document, so you'll need to put all of these logs into a, um, a PDF, scan them into a PDF so that you can upload the one document with that includes two logs per counselor. Um, on editing, editing the time use percentages, I want to show you that. When you open that up, you're going to come to this report um, and there is likely to be percentages in here already. We asked you about these time percentages when you set up the, uh, the survey last spring. There was a counselor survey, and in that counselor survey, we asked you to identify uh, the percentage of time that you spent on each type of task. Um, you did that without the advantage of data. Now you have data and you know exactly how much time you're spending in each one of those tasks. So please go in and edit these percentages so that they're data-based uh, percentages. And then up here where we've asked us, are these percentages based on a time log? Say yes. Okay, and then also here if you want to update the student opportunities that you put in uh, when you took the survey, uh, last spring, um, you can update that, update that. And if for some reason you didn't take the counselor survey last spring, you know, you can go ahead and do that right there. Okay, so that's that, time use. Um, conduct advisory council meeting three. This will take you to the manual. And we'll go there real quickly. So here is resources and priority goals update. Here's everything that you need for that. Okay, go back and um, upload your um, resource action plan. Um, this is also an uploader, um, so you'll take that paper document and, and upload it into the system. Um, review the program goals report, that's the one report that we just looked at, and then enter your priority goals. So we've made this really easy. Um, I think this is um, really kind of cool. So um, we're going to click on the enter icon, and then there's three steps in this process. The first step is to review the goals report. We've already done that. Then you're going to, the reason we put this step in here is just to make sure you don't want to edit anything in your program goals. Um, so if, if you misunderstood what program goals were and you've already limited that down to like seven or eight, but you really realize that there are 70 choices you want kids to make, go in and edit the program goals report first. Okay, then you're going to select the program goals. So what happens is, is when you're selecting the priority program goals, 
again, this is pulling together a gazillion pieces of data, so it's going to take a little bit longer to load. There it is. So here is all of your program goals, what grade level it's for, uh, what group it's for, and, um, and what the, the baseline data is. Um, so you're just going to go and check the ones that you want to be priority goals. So you can see this school, um, I think, had like 10 maybe priority goals that are in there. They felt that they were going to really beef those up. Um, when I first saw this, I thought maybe uh, they had bitten off more than they could chew, but when you see their data, they, they nailed it. Um, okay, and then you save that. So that's, that's all you have to do. To select your priority goals, you just make some checks. Okay, then I'm going to go back. Then we want to enter the priority goals data. So I'm going to click enter. These will become your 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 uh, your data targets. And again, we're loading a the computer is searching through a gazillion bits of data, so it's a little bit slower to load. But here they are. And um, look, and look, I'm just so proud of the school. Um, so look what they've done. This is complete activities in the Drive Your Life website. They were at 53%, 28%, things were, you know, they must have deleted a program or something, it went down. This, these are the dates, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, so um, they were at 6%, they decided to work on it last year, and they increased from 6% 6 to 14%. So they must have been letting kids know about that, because that data increased. And then if you just walk through these, completed two semesters of Algebra 1 was one of their goals that kids would choose to enroll in and complete two semesters. Started out at 55% in 2010, they're at 94%. I mean, just awesome. Created a graduation plan, started out at 49, they're at 81. Discussed future plans with their counselor, 24, 53. I mean, just, um, you know, just all through this is, is really, uh, you know, some data that shows how they changed their school counseling program. Just a reminder that um, then what you'd be doing is you'd be putting in the target. So they may put in, we're going to get from 45, 14% to 25%, and then what, when they're going to do that by, it, maybe it's going to be in the spring survey for next year. So they would write down spring of 2015 is when they're going to uh, look at that. So, and then you, you just... Um, you just save. It might also be that you want to make an additional target. I'm not going to click this because I don't want to mess up um, this school system, but if you click additional target, then another set of boxes will pull up and then that would allow you to say 25% by 2015 and then 35% by 2016 to show that this is going to be a, a multiple year initiative. Um, remember too that if you don't want to use um, if you don't want to use the um, the survey data, you can just click this box that says um, other data, and then that is telling you that um, you're going to switch to other data. And um, if you save that, I think I can do this and then undo it. Um, you know, you're telling the computer that you're going to use some kind of other data to to collect. And that will um, eventually, yep, here we go, that will give you a, a box that looks like this. And um, then you're going to say what we're going to count. And, you know, you're going to maybe look at a report that Driver Your Life provides, or you're going to count, um, I don't know what you'd count, but um, you're, you're, you would just write here what you are going to count if you're not going to use survey data, and then put in your actual because we won't have that for you if you're counting something other than survey stuff. So put in your actual, when the actual was, and then put in your target when the target was. And if you decide, oh man, there's, you know, there's really nothing I can, can count on this, then you can always just go back to survey data. So click that and save. Um, and then that will, um, that will eventually, as we crunch all that survey data, um, pull the survey data back in. Um, one other thing that I want to point out, when you click other data, I should have shown you this earlier, um, that if I, when I save that, um, I'm also given the opportunity to say, 
after this loads, I'll show you, that there is no actual data available yet. So it may be that you have a priority goal that is not part of the, the RSC survey or Learn More survey, so you don't have survey data, and there's nothing you can count, and you're, you just don't have any data. So it's fine to say there's no data available right now. Still put in your target, but your target is just kind of a, a guess, <coughs> excuse me, a guess where you think that would be. Okay, winding down. So that's how to get that in. Um, oops, this is telling me I want to put this back to survey data. Okay, we'll get back them back to where they started. And then the last couple things on the process page are just the rubric, um, and then um, you know you're good for to go on that one. So I'm going to wind down. I know we're our overtime, um, but I do want to show you very quickly. Uh, the submissions this month are the, the Resource Expansion Action Plan. Uh, there's just two rubric items. The action plan includes activities designed to gain resources for the school counseling program, and a target data or your target situation um, is included where you want to be at the end of expanding your resources. And then your priority goals, one or more priority goals has been identified. Pretty simple on that one. In your minutes, remember we're looking for minutes that include the names of those that are present. Um, and what they have um, in, in the groups that they represent. Uh, there's summary of the activities and discussions that you've had, and, they and, the, and your minutes contain specific references to people and the ideas that they've contributed. It doesn't have to be a gazillion people, but just two or three people a month um, that have contributed ideas and, and what they said. Okay, um, we've already done all the online system, and I think that's it. I'm going to look and see what questions you have. And um, and I think that's it. Okay, not seeing any questions that uh, are for right now. We will archive this, so um, any uh, school that uh, missed it this year, I know a lot are on fall break, um, you'll be able to watch the archive version. And again, I apologize for going over. Um, there's just a lot to cover. This is a very, very important meeting as we're expanding resources. So thank you so much, and we'll close the webcast. <laughs>